How's it going, everybody? Today, I want to go over a little bit about MS Config. MS Config is a really good troubleshooting utility that I use every day. It is great when trying to troubleshoot why Windows won't load. Uh, if certain devices or drivers don't work after Windows boots up, it's a, it's a good troubleshooting utility. So I want, I want to go over, just kind of give just a basic user guide over each of the tabs and kind of some of the functions that you can do inside MS Config. MS Config showed its head in, like, I think it was a Windows 98 was the first operating system that MS Config came out, which was a long, long time ago. But it has definitely been a tool for anybody that's a power user on a computer or a tech to that it saved my ass many times. So going into it, I'm going to show there's a few ways to get into MS Config. One is Control, Escape, MS Config. Then you've also got another one. Windows key R for power users who know all the little keys and commands. So now MS Config has been brought up on the screen. We have multiple tabs. We've got general, boot, services, startup, and tools. So looking at the general tab, we've got the, the three bullets, the normal, diagnostic, and selective. Normal means pretty much everything's going to load, all the driver services, everything that's gonna, that Windows wants to load is going to load. Diagnostics, it's going to be bare bones minimum. What it needs to run it will load nothing more. Now, the moment you go to the next tabs over and you start making changes, then you're going to be into what's called the selective startup. You can choose what services you want to run, what startup items you want to run, so on and so forth. Now, before we before I go any further, if you're not familiar or not comfortable going into this, back everything up. Take notes of what you're changing. Um, create a restore point. Because in here, if you don't know what you're doing and you're making changes, you can do a lot of damage. Moving on to our boot tab, it shows our Windows 10 operating system. It's the current OS. It's the fault. Sometimes some people might see more, more than one that's listed there just due to the fact that they might be dual booting another operating system. Now, underneath here, you click your operating system, you got advanced options. I've never had to change anything inside advanced options the years I've been doing this. Uh, you can set how many processors you want to use, the maximum amount of memory. Um, the only time I've ever heard of this being used is for like software development, driver development, because then you can restrict what your system settings are to kind of replicate a scenario or environment to tr troubleshoot and test and do quality assurance. So I've never had to go to make any change in here. Looking at boot options. This is where it gets pretty, pretty good. Uh, safe boot. You can click safe boot. Minimal is just safe mode with basic drivers, no networking, nothing. Just as you would do if you hit F8 and go into normal safe mode. Alternate shell is equivalent to safe mode with command line. There is no GUI. It is all command line. Active Directory of Repair, that's more advanced. Then safe boot with networking would be equivalent to doing F8, hitting safe mode with networking so that it will boot, but you'll also have the internet for the drivers needed for internet functionality. Now, looking over here, we've got other little options that we can do. Like, let's say, for example, you got a driver or a service that's not running or something's crashing when it's booting up. You can go and enable boot logging here. And when you go and restart the computer, it will save that log in the Windows directory, and you can then go, boom, open it up and, and go through and start doing your diagnostics on your computer or your clients. It's a great little tool. Um, no GUI boot. Boots without a GUI is kind of self-explanatory. You can make all the boot settings permanent and time out after 30 seconds. This over here is a, pre a pretty big one. Going on to the next tab of services. Services here, it's kind of an overview. There's another tab, another Microsoft snap-in or panel I'm going to be showing later on. This services is all that Microsoft runs in the background, all their services, along with software that I've installed on the computer that requires services to run. So like let's say Super Any Spyware here, for example. That, that service is running. It's running in the background. Now, looking at this, it's a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. It's going to show you the service name, the manufacturer, the status, and what and the date that it was disabled on. Now, one thing that's cool about here is, like, let's say, for example, here's a, uh, one kind of troubleshooting. Here's an issue we had about two weeks ago. Where a lady would plug in her iPhone to uh, connect her to her iTunes. 
it would not sync up. iTunes would not load at all. So when she called us and we went to take a look, the reason it wouldn't load is because it was disabled under services. So it, it would not load that service to be able to operate iTunes. This is one of those suggestions where, or one of these scenarios where being to look at services and knowing what you're looking for and being familiar with it is going to pay off. Now, first thing I always do is hide always hide all Microsoft services because there's a lot of them, and you don't really want to shut off the stuff that's tied to Microsoft because then you might break your system or it won't boot. Now, looking here at the other software, I, I can see that what's running, what stopped Google, NVIDIA, Team Viewer, VMware gives me an idea of what's running in the background. This is more of an overview. When we get into the service.msc, then it's gonna we're gonna get a lot more into startup automatic delay, a lot more in depth things. So this this is being services. Let's move over to startup. Startup now in Windows 8 and 10, originally in 7, Vista and all the others, startup would have listed their check boxes for what you can choose what to start up, what not to. Now in Windows 10 and Windows 8, it's different. It, it redirects you to the task manager. Now looking here, Chrome, I can see what's been disabled on startup, the impact it has on the operating system loading. If I were to sit here and have all kinds of things high, a high impact, I'm going to have a longer boot time. It's going to be a slower startup. When companies talk about optimizing your computer and making it faster, this is one of the processes that they go through. Well, my company does. We go through, if it's not needed or a requirement to run in the background on startup, we shut it off. And you can go through here and let's say, for example, Power ISO. It's got a low startup impact. Disabled. It is not on startup now. That is not going to run in the background. That's so, for example, like when I turn the computer on now, I might see the icon down in the tray at the very bottom right of where it started up. Now I will not. So this is the this this has been for the startup tab. Looking at tools, going over here. There's gonna be a lot more videos because with these tools here, you can do a lot of things. You there is so much it's the troubleshooting toolbox. You've got everything from user account settings, event viewer. There'll be a whole video just on event viewer and filtering. There is registry editor. There'll be a whole video on registry editor. System restore. And it also shows the command down here. So like how we did the control escape at the beginning of the video or the Windows key R, we would be we could just punch in reg at 32.exe, bam, it will load it. It will give the it will give the value and, and start the, the tool. Each of these tools are powerful things when it comes to diagnosing computers. Getting familiar with each of these and being fluent in them is, is going to be vital. There's other tools out there like Hirons and UBCD that have a lot of other tools in them. But when it comes to just diagnosing Windows, this is a big chunk of tools, which we will go over in future videos. I hope this, by recording this, this is the first one, the video I've decided to do. Uh, I'm by no means trying to jump in and show everything there is. Just give a little, a little bit of an overview to help people that have not jumped in there be a little bit more comfortable, or at least know what they're getting into before they go into it. If there's any questions, concerns, or have any problems, or anything I can do, please leave a comment down at the bottom. Uh, if you like the video, please subscribe. There's going to be more of them. And thank you all for watching. I hope this has answered a couple little questions, help you feel a little bit more comfortable. And if there's anything that I can do, please feel free to drop me a comment or a message. Check you out on Facebook and all that other good hoo-ha, snazzy stuff. Thank you for watching the video. I appreciate it. this. has just been a general overview of MSConfig on Windows 10.